Welcome back. We've been learning about the Midah of Yishtavos, and now we want to try to see how it applies in a few very practical ways. The flip side of Yishtavos would be what's called Behala, panic. A person who is thrown by the situation and therefore is not able to think straight and therefore often makes wrong decisions. In the Hoshanas, one of the Hoshanas describes different plagues that can affect plants or different parasites, bugs, worms that can affect grain, vineyards. And it also has a line in there about people. And we call out Hoshano Nefesh Mi Behola. Save people from panic. Because when we panic is when we make those wrong mistakes. That's when we lose our equilibrium. The very frightening aspect of the situation or the fact that we're in a situation we didn't want to be in makes us feel so lost and so endangered that we panic and oftentimes make mistakes. The Midah of Ishtavos lets a person know that in whatever situation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there. And therefore the person can try to calm themselves and take that minute back to retain their equilibrium and take a look at the decisions they have to make. Another place where Ishtavos can save us is from the world of Daiga, from the world of worry. Worry is something which can gnaw at us constantly, constantly, constantly about what happens if this situation happens or that situation happens. Or even in the current situation that I'm in, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I don't like any of, this situ- of the choices that I have. The Midah of Ishtavos allows the person to both be prepared for situations and to accept in certain ways the situation that they're in. It doesn't mean that you have to be fatalistic. Take any steps you can to better the situation, but that's all part of making those proper decisions. There's a beautiful story about the Majitsa Rebbe. During World War II, he was met by someone in Warsaw, and the person asked him, Rebbe, you don't look worried. How can it be that you're not worried? He said, I worry. I have five minutes a day that I worry. The rest would simply be repetition. That's the idea of the Midah of Hishtavos. It enables a person to step back a little bit not to let the situation destroy all aspects of their life, including their power of decision. You'll worry to the extent that you estimate accurately the dangers or the difficulties of the situation, and then you try to take your best steps and best choices in that situation. Another aspect of Hishtavus is what we can do to prepare beforehand. Chazal say in Pirkei Yavos, Ezu chacham haroe es who is wise? Someone who sees what can develop. So Rabbi Vigdor Miller, in a piece he wrote about that Mishnah, said a person has to really use their imagination to anticipate different scenarios. Realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu can send different situations into the world. It doesn't mean you should always be paranoid of terrible things happening, but realize that things could happen and Plan out for yourself, actually visualize to yourself how would you react to it. You're going away for Shabbos and you missed the last bus. What would you do, right? If you have a plan in your mind, you're getting together with people and someone there sometimes says something that you find annoying or hurtful. How would you like to react to that? Plan it out. See it. A person who plans a reaction of Hishtavos, a person who thinks beforehand, sees what could develop, has a picture of how Ratzon Hashem would like him to react in that moment, is more likely not to lose himself in that way. Again, taking a muscle from martial arts, when people practice so much how you respond to someone coming at you with a knife in an alleyway, and you've gone through the drill and you've done the moves, so then when it actually happens, if a person really has practiced properly, so then they're able to take the decisions that they need to defend themselves and not be paralyzed by the suddenness or the frighteningness or the negativity of the situation, which is there, but nonetheless, to be paralyzed would be the wrong decision. Haroa es hanolad lets a person plan out their hishtavos-based reaction beforehand. If that's there, it enables you to rule over the situation instead of the situation ruling over you. I'll finish with one beautiful picture of hishtavos. It was an old man in Yerushalayim I was speaking with once about the famous Yerushal Mitzadik Rabari Levine. And he said that he could tell me many things about Rabari Levine. What he chose to tell me was that he had letters from Rabari. 
And he had a relative in America who did handwriting analysis, graphology. He said he sent him a letter to the, in, of Rabari Levine's, without the man knowing whose it was. He said, tell me about this person. He said, my relative wrote back to me, he said, this man who wrote this letter is governed only by his conscious and not by his self-conscious. I'm not taking any stands about the validity of graphology or not, but that picture of a person who's deciding to do that which he wants to do because of his conscious decision, not because of knee-jerk reactions or pulls from the subconscious, that's that picture of the person who goes through life with Hishtavos. I'm not saying that it's easy, and it's something that we can really try to move up to in small incremental steps, but like all things we should have before us, that picture of that ideal, ideal person of Ishtavas that we would like to be, and hopefully we'll be able to move forward each day toward getting there. Hatzlachah.